Uh, like she said, my name is uh, Tanya Arrington. I'm the Deputy Chief with Investigative Services. Um, so what we'll do is just kind of go ahead and hop in uh, to the homicides. We'll discuss the ones that we believe are not related, and then we'll talk about a series that we do believe is related. Um, the first homicide um, investigation, 7300 block of Ray Road in the South Division. Shortly after 5 a.m., a call for service was placed for a di disabled vehicle in the roadway at, Ro at Ray Road near I-485. Officers responded and found the deceased victim identified as 36-year-old Derek Bias nearby outside the vehicle with an apparent gunshot, wo gunshot wound. At this time, there are no further updates on this particular investigation. Our second homicide shortly after at 5.30 p.m. in the 8900 block of Cine Bay Drive in the North Division. This was a domestic violence related shooting between two family members. The suspect and victim were involved in an argument before the suspect shot the victim. The victim was pronounced deceased at the scene and has been identified as 37-year-old Daniel Gomez. This suspect is 62-year-old Louis Gonzalez, who has been arrested and charged with voluntary manslaughter. The next homicide investigation began about 8.45 p.m. yesterday in a parking lot around the 1500 block of Parker Drive in the Westover Division. Four victims were struck by gunfire. One of the victims was pronounced deceased at the hospital. The other three have non-life-threatening injuries. The deceased victim has been identified as 29-year-old LaMarcus Jackson. Preliminary information indicates that this altercation was a drug-related transaction and the victims knew each other. The final homicide happened early this morning, shortly after 1 a.m. in the 3800 block of Statesville Avenue in the Metro Division. We believe the shooting is linked to several other shootings that happened within a short time frame. The homicide occurred when the victim was traveling in a vehicle outbound on Statesville Avenue when his vehicle was struck by gunfire. That victim was pronounced deceased and, is, and uh, the identification is pending family notification. Between approximately 1 a.m. to 1.30, shortly after this homicide, we had another shooting at the intersection of LaSalle Street and Newland Road where a bicyclist was shot at but not struck by a suspect firing from a vehicle. A victim was driving on LaSalle Street shortly thereafter near Interstate 77 when his vehicle was struck by gunfire. The victim was not injured. A group of individuals were then fired at at the 2100 block of Catherine Simmons Avenue. A victim inside the home beside those individuals was struck by gunfire and has non-life-threatening injuries. The final shooting in this series happened in the Steel Creek Division. A bicyclist was hit by gunfire in the 100 block of Hillary Circle and has non-life-threatening injuries, and a house in the backdrop was also fired or shot into during this incident, but there were no injuries. Our homicide unit and detectives are tirelessly investigating all of these incidents and are leaving no stone unturned. All evidence collected will be analyzed and prioritized. We are processing this in-house in our labs through our evidence and property control division. At this time, we have no confirmed suspects and we have no verified description of a vehicle. If anyone in the public has any information, we are urging you to call Crime Stoppers at 704-334-1600. The chief has authorized a reward of $10,000 for anyone who has information that leads to the arrest of these cases. Remember, all tips are anonymous and there's no tip too small we are asking for the public's help. Some of the information we're looking for is maybe you have surveillance footage in the areas that we just discussed, or maybe you were a victim and didn't even realize it 
if her house was shot into or maybe you're walking and her gunshots, please call 911. Residents can also call 704-432-TIPS and ask to speak directly to a homicide unit detective if they have information involving these cases. In response to this, we have developed a robust action plan with patrol and specialized units to address the most recent crime trends I just covered. At this time, I'll open it up for questions. Can I, the 3,800 blocks, and I'm sorry if you have to repeat yourself, but you, went, you covered a lot. So the 3,800 block, Statesville Avenue, is that a fifth homicide? Or is that? Um, Are we at five now? Is that 3,800 block, Statesville? Um, so that would be the fourth homicide. So that was kind of the fourth and final homicide that kind of started the shooting series. So we believe that that homicide was the start of the shooting series that I just talked about. And though there were, there was LaSalle and Newland. And, and just remember, we will send this out also. Okay. So all of this will be outlined in our media release. Okay. Deputy Chief, when we're talking about suspects in cases like this, we know that we do have one <laughs> in custody right now for the uh, Cinebay Drive case, right. that domestic one you were That's talking correct. about. We don't have any others for any of those other shootings. I know that the Parker Drive one, we believe that those people that were shot at, those victims were also kind of suspects in that case as well. But when we're talking about Statesville Avenue, we're talking about Ray Road, we do not have suspects in those two. That would be correct. So um, our shooting series, we do not have suspect information, and we're really asking the public to come forward with any information that they may have. The and Ray Road situation, the, I know you said that there's not much can you explain why the victim had the Charlotte address, but there were Colorado license plates on the vehicle? I can't. I, I don't know the answers to um, to that. Why do you all believe that the uh, four shootings are connected? Sure. Great question. Um, so if you look at the homicide that kind of started this and then you follow the shooting series, um, you know, we looked at the MO, the method of operation, um, shooting from a vehicle at our uh, victims, right? Uh, proximity, um, you know, those first uh, three that I discussed were in a small location in the metro area. And then they moved to uh, Steel Creek, same type of MO, shooting from a, um, from a vehicle. Uh, time frame, we're talking about 30 minutes. That's a short time frame to have that many shootings to include a homicide. And then also the evidence collected. I won't go into details, but the evidence collected on scene has linked um, these cases together. And then also if you look at uh, we had two people riding bikes, right? And then two people driving cars. That's also um, the MO that's very similar. Two points you can share, do you think were there multiple guns, multiple people? Or? We just don't know at this time. We're still trying to piece all that together. Um, like I said, you know, the homicide detectives, the uh, investigators within the division, we've all been working together to try to piece all of this together. So it's still very fluid. Um, that's why we were late getting here. We still have information coming in. Uh, I won't go into details, but what I can tell you is uh, we feel like we have a solid action plan um, where we've increased our patrols and our specialized units to address these trends. Deputy Chief, have you guys received any information about this car that might be um, involved in the Statesville Avenue series of shootings? Do you uh, know anything about what we're looking for there? Uh, we don't have any confirmed information. Uh, we have a bunch of leads. We're working through those. So right now we're still talking to witnesses. We're still canvassing the area. Um, you know, there was a, a, a lot of distance between Metro and Steel Creek. So, you know, we're trying to cover a lot of ground and we're trying to divide and conquer. Do you all have any concern of any further retaliatory type shootings related to this? <laughs> so I, to me, I wouldn't consider this retaliatory, right? So we, we're, this isn't our typical, um, maybe this gang or this neighborhood is beefing with this neighborhood over here. I mean, I think what we're looking at are, you know, um, are, um, the first few homicides that I discussed, um, I think you can show that there's no link to those. And then our homicides with these shootings, that there is a link, but it doesn't appear to be like any type of retaliation, like gangs retaliating mm -hmm. against another gang. Of them knowing each other and then 
Okay. No, we are still working through uh, that investigation. Okay. And with the $10,000 reward, is that for all of these or just the series of shootings? That's for the series of shootings. Chief Arrington. Yes. For the series, is it, is it fair to say for the police, this is an unusual situation? Yes, sir. Possibly the same person or persons, or are they randomly targeting motorists and people on a bicycle? Um, like at random for what you that's what it appears like at this time. We have not been able to link any of the victims together other than potentially uh, what they were doing in the location, right? A couple of people on bikes and a couple of people were in cars. Okay, and it's, so this is not retaliatory. It's not a situation where the shooter is mad at somebody and is aiming at them. It may be a random, somebody's riding by and so I'm gonna to decide to shoot at them. That's what the preliminary, uh, in investigation is showing at this time so we're still waiting on our lab to process all of our evidence so we can confirm that there is uh, a link to all of these shootings but you know we felt like it was important enough for the community uh, to get involved um, we want to make sure you are aware and then come to you and ask you for help we need help solving these and we need help quickly any suggestion to the people that live in these <coughs> areas that might be on a bike yeah you're, I mean you're hearing this that if I'm on a bike yeah. or in a car well, I, th I think first thing is you're going to see um, extra patrols out there. You're going to see the police out there. Uh, secondly, I mean, I, th I think we have to be vigilant, right? Um, that's all the time, but maybe a little extra vigilant and making sure you're aware of your surroundings. And, you know, um, you know, if you don't have to be out in the middle of the night, you know, maybe skip that until we can uh, get this resolved and determine if there is an actual link to all of these. Deputy Chief, when it comes to the series of shootings, is there any indication that juveniles could be involved in this? Uh, there's no indication. We're not ruling it out, but there's no indication that juveniles are involved. We're looking at every possible lead. Chief, is there any similarities between the targets or victims of these series of shootings, age, anything like that? No, nothing like that other than, like I said, time, location, two on bikes, two in cars. So that's where we've been able to kind of piece some of this together and believe that they potentially could be linked. Could this be classified as a serial shooter? Um, I don't know that we would want to go and classify it as a serial shooter until we have uh, confirmed evidence that link these cases together. This is all preliminary. This is, hey, we want to get out in front and know that there's a potential that these cases are linked. And with that, we think it's serious enough the chief has offered a $10,000 reward for the community's help. Somebody out there knows who this person or people are, and we're asking them to come forward. Sure. What's your message tonight? Um, our, our message is, A, um, you know, we're always going to be transparent. We want to make sure people are aware of the potential that's out there, right? Secondly, be vigilant. If you see something suspicious, something doesn't feel right, call us. Let us check it out. I don't care how small it is. And especially if we're talking about these areas, if we're talking about these time frames, give us a call. Let us check it out. Um, third, um, know that we are out there. We have increased our patrols. We have directed patrols. Our homicide units are on it. They work throughout the night all the way in, uh, up to this very point um, trying to piece uh, information together. And then also, like I said, we're asking for the community's help. Call us. Somebody out there knows who this is. All right. Thank you.